So we are in full prep mode for our trip across the channel and after speaking with uh, some of you and we met with uh, some friends uh, yesterday, um, there is something uh, interesting about um, uh, EU law thingamajig. So basically I have a European uh, Union passport. I have a Bulgarian passport and they're in the EU so I have basically freedom of movement. I have dual citizenship but he has only British citizenship. So until now we basically thought that we have to subscribe to the uh, Schengen Shuffle so the uh, 90 days uh, within 180 day time limit for a British citizen to be you know within the Schengen area which we'll get into later to explain what that means but because of my EU passport that might not be the case so uh, I want like I, I, I want the document and I'll, I'll print it and I'll be like I'll highlight it and whatever our rights are I'll be like they go with my passport and our marriage certificate and everything what else do you need um, uh, so that that is what we're gonna do today find out the truth can a Brit travel with their uh, EU citizen partner? I think we should explain what Schengen is for anybody who doesn't know because I have been asked very frequently when I'm yabbering about the Schengen area what is the Schengen area? So in the European continent there is the EU and within the EU there are Schengen area countries basically the Schengen area is freedom of movement where you don't have border controls between the countries so for example Portugal and Spain and France are all in the Schengen which means you can drive from Portugal into Spain into France without any border crossings, without any passport checks. There's literally just a sign saying France and yep. you're now in France. It's, it's, like a, it's just like a town or a city sign. Yeah, then. and then everything changes language. Now, there are a few countries within the EU that aren't in the Schengen area yet. They yeah. are obliged to join yeah. eventually. So, so, so there's a lot of clubs uh, <laughs> in, in, the, in the EU and, and, and stuff. One is the European Union. And then there's clubs within that, so the Schengen area. Actually, actually, you don't have to be in the European Union to be a Schengen country. Go Switzerland. So that means that this 90, uh, 90 day within the 180 day rule applies for all of the countries in the Schengen area. So if you enter France on January 1st, mm. you're allowed 90 days between January 1st and June 30th to take. travel, give or take, to travel within that blue Schengen area country block. Yeah, as, an, as a non-EU EU citizen. citizen. With that 90 and 180 day rule, you can just spend three months solid. So mm -hmm. January 1st until the end of March, that's three months in yeah. the Schengen area and then leave for three months, go somewhere else. And then after the 180 days, your clock resets. So basically, come July, you can then enter Schengen again on a new 90 and 180 day period. Yeah. However, when you enter and exit Schengen as a British citizen, when you show your British passport, they now stamp with a date to say when you've entered and when you've exited. Mm -hmm. So that they can keep track of when your clock uh, resets and when you have entered and exited and that's very important apparently, to get your passport stamped. Apparently they're rather uh, strict about it at yes. the moment. However there are countries in the European Union that are not Schengen yet. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, Bulgaria, Romania, Croatia, Cyprus yep. and Ireland. Okay so that's five. All of these countries at the moment have their own clock uh, and, the, the, and the rule with them is again a, a 90 days within a 180 day period you can stay in the country without a any visa or a, declaring really anything about yourself for example what that means is that you can spend your 90 days in the schengen area and then you can hop over to romania and use up the 90 day clock in romania and that would reset your schengen clock so you can hop back into the schengen area for the next 90 days now this is obviously just an example you don't have to use up the whole time in in one country country like that or uh, you know you can be like 10 days in Schengen 
20 days in non-Schengen and then the clocks are gonna kind of, you know, somebody has to do a lot of maths if you keep changing from Schengen to Schengen. Do an Excel Schengen. table. Yeah, yeah, do an Excel table to, to keep track of uh, your, uh, your own days. Alright, so this is the letter from the Europe Direct Contact Centre someone sent in. So they asked about the, the visa thing. Yeah. So it says, thank you for contacting Europe Direct Contact Centre. A citizen of the UK does in principle not require a visa to travel for short stays of no more than 90 days within a 180 day period in the Schengen area. In the Schengen area. In the Schengen area. So that's the 90 180 day rule. The fact that you reside with your Irish wife in the UK is not, is on its own not sufficient to waiver the limits of the 90 180 day rule if you intend to travel so on, on your own. Hold on. The fact that so the, this this is not us, this is someone else, but in a similar mm. situation. Um, the fact that you reside with your European <laughs> wife in the UK yeah. does not in itself waive the 90, mm. 80 day, uh, 180 day rule. If your wife is travelling with you to a Schengen country or joins you... I, or joins Sch you. Or joins you in a Schengen country... The 9180 day limitation does not apply. Accordingly, any stays in the Schengen area together with her will not be taken into account when you travel again on your own. So that means that your clock doesn't start at all until I'm on my own. So if we so hold went... on. if you go if you go by yourself to Spain, yeah, um for 10 days. Yeah. Your clock will start. Yeah. But if I come join you, your clock stops. Correct. Until you leave me again. <laughs> and then my Bye. clock and then my clock come, uh, but, starts again. But then you get in trouble probably. Uh, if, when you cross the borders by yourself. You can't cross the borders by yourself if you gonna gone over your time. Because well, how yeah, do you okay. prove that I was with you right. for some little section? I don't know. But it does get a tad tricky when, you know, you're um, essentially golden ticket doesn't is not there fully yeah. like, like i have to guide you through the borders <laughs> come along the scary border official what i was thinking is so at the british border control we both show our british passports la di da good day blah 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 okay how do you do <laughs> but when we get to french border control if you show your european passport yeah and i show and my british passport with a marriage certificate to yeah. show that we're married I don't know what they'll do. I don't know if they'll still stamp my passport. I don't know if they'll give me a special thing to say, oh, I've entered the EU with my wife who's an EU yeah. citizen. I don't know. Well, we should really give it a go. I think we should try and get a letter from wherever this person got the letter. So if we can get a letter that basically confirms the... Com just says this in writing for us. Yeah. It will be very handy because... That is one solid, like, black and white document that'll be like, well, there you go, the European Union itself has said that we're <laughs> fine, he's fine to be with me. So this is Europa.eu, this is uh, an official website of the European Union. Yeah. It's in English. Okay, so travelling in the EU with your non-EU family members. So under EU rules, you have the right to travel with your core family to an EU country other than the one you are a national of. Your non-EU family members must carry a valid passport at all times, depending on the country they are from. They may also have to show an entry visa at the border. Now, I know I don't have to show an entry visa because the UK does not require an entry visa mm -hmm. for the EU, but I will have to carry my passport. That's fine. It's always best for your non-EU family members to be well informed in advance and have the necessary documentation before starting their Which journey. Which is why we're doing this. Uh, if they arrive at the, pass uh, the border with, with their passport but without an entry visa, border authorities should give them an opportunity to prove by other means they are family members of a mobile EU citizen. A mobile? A mobile, like you're moving around. Right, okay. So I can Pictures! I can prove I'm a family member because we're married and that's the marriage certificate. Yes, but yeah, but we can prove that obviously that we are moving together. Oh yeah, of course. By A, me being with you and B, if they want any more, technically, pictures yeah. would, would uh, well, do There you it. go. They can do so by providing proof of their identity and family ties with the EU citizen, for example, marriage or birth certificate. Ta-da. And prove that they are joining, joining or, or accompanying, accompanying the EU citizen. For example... 
Proof that the EU citizen is already living in the country where entry is sought. If they manage to prove it, it should be they should be issued with an entry visa on the spot. Oh, that's getting an entry visa. We don't hmm. need an entry visa. Mm. Fine. Entry refusal. Let's not read that bit. EU uh, information on citizens' rights. rights. UK government information. Brexit. This is the government UK website. Find out how new Brexit rules apply to things like travel and doing business. A new relationship. Holy ah. mother of crackers. Travelling to the EU. <clears throat> there are new rules for British travellers travelling to and from the EU for work, holiday or to visit loved ones. COVID-19 restrictions allowing. Mm, of course. If you plan to travel to Europe, take out comprehensive travel insurance, check your passport and get documents you may need to take your vehicle with you. We've already done the vehicle bit. Uh, UK residents continue to have access to emergency and necessary healthcare cover. That's the new British health card thing, which is extraordinarily patriotic. I feel like I will be refused to be treated <laughs> with this thing. Okay? Please rescue me! No. Okay. Da 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 da. That's all about the cards. If you're traveling for work, you need a work permit. You cannot take products containing meat or dairy, e.g. a ham and cheese sandwich or a coffee with milk. Uh, almost all plant and plant products... What about our fridge contents? <laughs> almost all plant and plant products, including fruit, vegetables, flowers and seeds, requires a photosanitary certificate. Do we have a photosanitary <laughs> certificate for our cacti? <laughs> No. No. <laughs> or our cucumber. Or the tomatoes. <laughs> I'm just imagining, here's one for the cucumber, the tomatoes, Bob, Bill, Ow. <laughs> Luckily, most of the plants are fake. Do, um... No, yeah, the, the dried, dried herbs. Dried herbs count as a plant? Nutmeg. What do you think? Ground nutmeg? Do they count? Does it count as a plant? Who knows? Okay. It's not there. Right. Let's head to the border and, uh, and check this out. Mm. 